were fighting in Southeast Asia depended upon their production. If they had any doubt about it, we'll stay there until they resolved their doubts. And then I had the chiefs there and the service secretaries, and we spent about 45 minutes going through it item by item and tying directly the item off the end of the production line into the the lives of our men in Southeast Asia. And I think when they left, they were all convinced on that point. Then last evening, we met with the total bargaining teams of the union and the company, about 40 or 50 of them, to let them give us a chance to let, let them tell us what their dispute was about. We went over in great detail so they feel they've fully explained their positions. And it's going to be a hell of a job to settle this thing because it's, it's moved out of the economic uh, uh, controversy, which wouldn't have been too hard to settle into this philosophic uh, uh, set of differences between arbitration, bulwarism, regional differentials, and so on. This morning, uh, uh, about 8.30, Jack Connor is supposed to sit individually with the company, and Bill Wirtz later in the morning with the union, and later today we're going to get together again and try and figure out what our next move is. But I've made it perfectly clear that uh, we're going to use Taft-Hartley. I haven't said that in those words, but it's perfectly clear we're not going to allow production to stop, no matter what that requires. And I think this holds a club over them. But I am rather pessimistic at the moment as to when and how this will be settled. Uh, where is the merit to both sides? Yes, I think so. But in my opinion, it's more on the side of the union. But that makes it even more difficult, Mr. President, because what is really at stake here is the strength of the union. It's been a very, very weak union, and really the only way, the only sure way of settling this strike, or potential strike, is to strengthen the union. And that's, that's hardly the kind of action that the government would normally be expected to take. And uh, it's something, of course, that Jack Connor would find it very difficult to swallow. But that's my own impression of, of the real issue here. And of course, business would just scream to high heaven if uh, we phrased it that way or gave any indication that's what we were doing. But frankly, I think that is the issue, and I think that's what's going to have to be done. Now, how to do it is the problem, and, and uh, we're just turning it over in our minds. I think that uh, I had these observations. You went much further than uh, I had... Uh, heard that you were willing to go, and I thought it was good that you did in uh, educating the public. I think there's a good well, deal to the story. To do, I did. I, I think did. there's a good deal to the story that uh, the people that I talk to don't know much about this strike, yeah. and for the first time, national uh, interest in the, the defense was really brought in yesterday. Well, it I hasn't been it. too much yet. Uh, the yeah. best reports you had have uh, been going on television, and somebody put out a statement that you talked to both sides like a Dutch uncle, which was, I would think, would be uh, inclined to make you the, uh, very acceptable to the service people and to the people who have interest in this thing and to the general public. I've watched the NBC and CBS. Well, I up. asked Arthur to, to put that line out, and I had the four inches of gold braid on the sleeves of wow. Admiral McDonald's show up in the pictures. You may have seen one in the post this morning. And we're trying to do everything we can to follow your, what I think is your design. I think if you can do that before we use Taft sure, Hartley, sure. Taft Hartley would be more, exactly, more palatable. Time. Absolutely. I completely agree with it. And now, uh, we don't have to use Taft Hartley until you get back, I assume. That's we? right. Right. And you're leaving Friday. I'm supposed to no, Saturday. I'm supposed to leave around Saturday night, so roughly 9, 10, 11 o'clock, and then be back early the following Friday morning, such as 8 a.m. in the morning. Now, are you putting all the men out there that you can yep. as fast as you can? Yes, we are. You want to bear in mind, you might have something unusual happen to you here any time. I know. And those that you got there, you can't. They're all right, but you might get stopped in them. I know that. And we can always stop yeah. them, and we can always pull them out. So tell your boys to get whatever you can well, out there. Now, does this, uh, do you have any apprehensions about this northern buildup? Is this, uh, well, I, uh, a little bit, but I'm not nearly as concerned about it, Mr. President, as I think Westy is, Westmoreland. He's very, very much concerned about it. He keeps expressing his concern in the cables, but as I sit here and look at the, the relative uh, strength of the forces, I think, I just don't can't believe that they can build up enough there to seriously hurt us. They might give us a bloody nose and we might lose 
200 men a week, let's say, instead of 100 men a week uh, for a week or two. But beyond that, I just can't see any real danger in the, in the buildup. Now, this, we're on rather delicate ground here because I've turned down this naval gunfire proposal. I sent you a memo the day before yesterday on the subject. I don't know whether you've had a chance to read it. But uh, uh, we're, we're denying Westmoreland some of the support he thinks he needs. But I think we're right in denying it, and the reason for my denial is I don't appraise the danger as great as he does. But I, I, I read the report both sides, and the way I read it, uh, you're justified in the decision that you made. Although I think that you ought to try to get the Joint Chiefs and his adherents here to point up how disastrous it would be for us to inaugurate in the closing days of the Congress a new uh, policy of this type, A and B, just on the uh, on the beginning of our conference in Manila, and how the propaganda people would just wreck us. And they, they'd say that uh, worse than they did about Goldberg and your your plane announcement. Yeah. They'd say just as we need to talk peace, we start to invade North Vietnam. And I think those generals, if somebody will, they ought to be able to say that and take it themselves and say, well, no, they we won't. can't do this. Mr. Right. President, they won't. I, I've silenced them a little bit on the bombing. You know, they. Well, I also have a strong recommendation from them to, to go back to Haiphong Petroleum, take out some remaining tanks there, to bomb the steel plant, the cement plant, the uh, the uh, Fukian airfield uh, storage, petroleum storage, and the Kep airfield petroleum storage, and three or four key bridges that are very sensitive in relation to Hanoi and, and, and the, uh, the uh, uh, road transport much closer to Hanoi. And I've turned all these things down. I've got them reasonably with me on that, but I just, frankly, I just pressed them as hard as I possibly can so that I, I honestly don't think I can push them into supporting me on the naval gunfire. On the other hand, they're not, they're not talking in public about it. And beyond that, when, when I figured out how many shots per 24 hours we can put on that 50 miles of road, and it's only 800, to think that that can make any difference, I really got them pretty well. But they, they just are bloody, and they're, they're not about to come out and actually support me on it. I want to support you. I just want them to understand yeah, well, they under, that you got a peace understand. conference coming, and you right. got the end of the congressional session. That's right. And that to, to, to bring a new element like this into it yeah. would be... Uh, very unwise, I think. So anyway, I think you justified whatever they do. But well, I don't. I don't think I'll have any trouble from them. on that damn aircraft announcement with the Goldberg speech. You know, we just had to do that. So we had the reprogramming actions up before the committee, and the committees were about to leak it. We're in a terrible fight with them. I've got to go up to the Armed Services Committee of the House this morning at 10 o'clock to testify. And this Rivers wanted to put through a separate bill. Uh, on on aircraft, and you can imagine what Mel Laird and, and Lipscomb and Jerry Ford would do to you today if we had a separate bill coming through. What 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 Rivers charges and Pike in particular charges that this is all a fraud, that you're misleading the American people, I'm misleading the American people, and the truth costs the war. It's all a political sham designed to get us past the election without disclosing what we're doing, and it's just a constant harassment. But that's what led to that damn aircraft announcement. What, uh, uh, have you got an agreement that you can just uh, talk to him about yeah. that law? Yeah, that's, that's, what I that's right. I, I got an agreement with Rivers on it if he can hold his committee, and that's the purpose of this morning for me to go up there and let him beat me around a bit, and then hopefully after that he'll be able to get them to sign on. What are your expenditures running now? I noticed some estimates made by the Laird. Well, they're, they're right on the nose with about between 66 and $67 billion for the fiscal year 67, and, and they're a little over the 60 billion mark at present, I mean, the, the annual rate. Well, they're running a month. I noticed the last two, two I, months I they had know. five, Mr. President, a little I, over five billion. They're, they're so erratic in this period because of some of the actions we took in in uh, June that I, I I honestly don't know. They're, they're, they're just about at an annual rate for the, the three months of around 60, 61 billion, I think it is. And you anticipate that uh, for fiscal uh, 67, you'll run 66? I told you 66. Now, 24 hours after I told you that last week, uh, we made a new estimate and looked closer to 67 and a half. We'll have another pretty decent estimate around the 19th of October, and I'll be in a better position to tell you then. Uh, 
you have, uh, what did you estimate, 58? 58.3. Now that was after, you know, we took out a billion and a half, a couple of billion that we were pretty sure at the time we needed. For uh, June 30, 67, uh, termination of operations, now this 66 or 67 and a half I'm mentioning will uh, lay the groundwork for carrying operations through June 30, 68, which means we're planning to buy in the fiscal 67 whatever we need up through June 30, 68. Matter of fact, the, the financial costs of the war, Mr. President, are, are uh, fairly reasonable. They're not nearly as high as, as I was afraid they might be. We've shifted, you see, a whole year here in our preparations June 3067, end of combat to June 3068. I'm building the bomb inventories and the ground ammunition inventories and the replacement aircraft on that assumption. So I'm, I'm reasonably pleased with the uh, estimates we have. What do you think it, it will cost us during the fiscal 68 to carry on this war? The while we're carrying it. Well, the best, this is the wild guess now, but at 69 billion is the best uh, estimate I have. How much of that's Vietnam? Well, you you can just roughly say that we were running around 50 billion before Vietnam, Mr. President. So maybe 19 billion of it is. That's the best way I can estimate the cost of the war at the present time. Have you got any uh, difficulties, particularly in your equipment or supply, or are you running short of anything? Or? Well, we we have. Uh, uh, shortages in certain new items. Uh, for example, the M16, which is a new rifle that has a very rapid fire of, of relatively small bore uh, weapons. It's sort of a hand-carried machine gun in a sense, which uh, is just our, our the hottest item we have now. We're short on both the rifles and the, and the uh, ammunition. But my God, a year ago, I came back in November and personally put on order 125,000 of those. Nobody wanted them then, but since that time, they want to completely re-equip the forces out in Southeast Asia, which were equipped with the M14, with this M16, and then re-equip the entire Marine Corps and about two-thirds of the Army with it. So we're short that because of the new items. Secondly, we're short illuminating rounds. Flares, uh, shells, and other things illuminate the, the areas at night because of the tremendous emphasis on, on night infiltration and night fighting to, to, to stop it. But these are... are about what you'd expect under these circumstances. The rate of usage is many, many times greater than anybody anticipated. Then we have a new grenade launcher that just came into the inventory, or just was authorized for use about 12 or 18 months ago, and that's very short supply. And there are one or two other items like that, but at the moment I have 145,000 tons of bombs on the ground out in Southeast Asia and another 120 on the way in transit. So that's 265,000 tons of bombs there or in transit, and we're using 40,000, well, about 43,000 tons a month. Frankly, we're gonna just snow the place under with bombs, and I'm doing it purposely to make them cry stop. Uh, and, and so the specific answer to your question, Mr. Doing President, it purposely for what? To make them cry stop. Oh, yeah, cry, cry, yeah, that's yeah. the word I missed. Yeah, to make them cry stop. Now, on the whole, we're in good shape. Joe also called me yesterday. He said he's back, wanted to talk, and said the major impression he brought back was that it was the most magnificently equipped and trained force that he had ever heard of America fielding in a war. And I think that's a pretty fair appraisal. Doesn't mean we won't have problems. For example, naval aircraft. The, we shifted so many sorties up into North Vietnam and into that Hanoi area, and the Navy is bearing such a high percentage of the flights in there and the loss rates are so heavy that our naval aircraft losses are quite a bit higher than we anticipated. And this means a little problem for maybe six to 12 months. So we've got a few few problems of this kind, but nothing at all serious. Uh, would you uh, let your people know before you go out there that I want a good full report on how our uh, bond things working out yeah, our 10 yeah, percent and have right. them make some checks so when right. you get out there you can activate them a little bit and have them ready for you so go out with them before you get there and yeah. tell them you won't go into it. i will now on this pacification we missed you yesterday because you had to go to these yeah. other meetings uh i 
we decided that uh, you have to, they say that Lodge is going to object very strenuously. I feel very strongly that it ought to go to the military. I don't think aid can run anything anywhere. I don't think they have personnel. I think what personnel they have is generally not too competent to ex-school teachers, things of that kind. They're a third of their people short out there. They advertise and trying to get them. I don't know. Get them. I don't know.